Eat some it, but show me cat three. Boo boo, then yeah, eat the pee. Who mace? What's my soda? Priest, I'm yet to reach. Let's just hope we can't have boo three. Hey, I wanted to work on this question dealing with Chubby Chef's inequality. It says, in December 2018, the average price of a regular unleaded gasoline, excluding taxes in the United States, was 306 per gallon. Assume that we, the standard deviation price per gallon is 11 cents per gallon, and use Chubby Chubb's inequality to answer the following. All right, so this one just tells us to use Chubby Chubb's inequality. Now, Chubby Chubb's inequality should be compared to em the empirical rule, and you want to know when to use Chubby Chubb's inequality, when to use the empirical rule. Basically, with empirical rule, um, you know that the data is bell-shaped. So if you look at this picture right here, it says the empirical rule, or the 68.95.99.7 rule, says if a distribution is roughly bell-shaped, then we know the distribution of, you know, what percentage of data was it is within one standard deviation, or two standard deviations, or within three standard deviations. We kind of know that if it's bell-shaped, right? Then we know that it's 68.95.99.7. All right, so you know you have this weird picture: mu minus one sigma, mu minus two sigma, mu minus three sigma, because it's within mu is the mean. So that's how much data is within one standard deviation of the mean, and that's the empirical rule. Now another compare that to Chubby Chubb's inequality, which is actually more powerful because it says for any data set, at least this percentage of the observations lie within k standard deviations so kind of like the same thing within k standard deviations see mu minus k sigma within k standard deviations of the mean so it's the same type of thing except for here it works for any data set and it's you can choose any k you want here k can be any number greater than one because if k is one you just get one minus one which is zero and so that doesn't work. You don't want K to be one or smaller. So K pretty much has to be greater than one for Chubby Chubb's inequality works. So Chubby Chubb works when K is greater than one. So like 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 2, 3. Uh, empirical rule only works when K is one, two, or three. You see that? Anyways, so that's a little bit about the empirical rule and Chubby Chubb's inequality. So let's try the question now. So we're going to use Chubby Chubb's inequality. It doesn't say anywhere that it's bell shaped. What's bell shaped? Well, the uh, the price of gasoline. We're dealing with the price of gasoline, right? So the price of gasoline is not sh bell shaped. It doesn't say that anywhere. So now we can start this question. What minimum percentage of gasoline stations had prices within four standard deviations of the mean? So that's a pretty simple question. You know, notice that it says minimum percentage, and that's, if we go back to our Chubby Chef's thing, it says at least this percent, at least, so that's the minimum. So really, we just have to plug in 4 for this one. If you plug in 1 fourth, what 4, 4 squared is 16, so 1 minus it, so it's going to be 15 over 16, whatever percentage that is, that will be the answer for that one. Let's see, 15 over 16, so right, do you see how I did that? Uh, so look, 1 minus 1 over 4 squared. So if we go to Desmos, for example, 1 minus 1 over 4 squared gives us 94% or 93.8%. So let's see, let's plug this in. Uh, what does it say? Round to two decimal places as needed. So 90, what was it? 93.75. Uh, let's see. 93.75 is correct. So let's try this. Okay, we got it. All right, let's try again. Let's see what's going on here. So it says, what minimum percentage? All right, what minimum percentage of gasoline stations had prices within 2.5 standard deviations of the mean? What are the gasoline prices that are within 2.5 standard deviations of the mean? So maybe they're asking more stuff on this one. But as far as getting that minimum percentage, that's simple. We just, this is, it says within 2.5 standard deviations. So K is 2.5. So we can just go over here and not now just change this 4 to 2.5. And I really like Desmos. You guys should use Desmos. It's awesome. So look, 60.32%. 60.32%. Let's plug that in.
2.5 standard deviations. Oh, 2.5. Let's raise this to 2. I think I did that wrong. 84%. <laughs> Alright, this wasn't raised to the second power, so 84%. So we'll just change this to 84. Alright. Well, the gasoline prices that are within 2.5 standard deviations of the mean are. So this is a good question. I like this one. So we just got to figure out what our mean and our standard deviation are. So it looks like our mean is what? 306? Is that the mean? Yeah, average price. And then what's our standard deviation? 11. So we just got to multiply and subtract 2.5 standard deviations. So what is a standard deviation? It's 11 cents. So 2.5 times 11 cents. So let's see, 11 cents. 306, 2.5, let's try this. Oh, 306 minus 2.5 times 11 cents, so 0.11. We can maybe put 0 0.11, might look better. Oh, there you go, that's that one, and then Desmos is so great, you can copy paste like this, and then just change this to a plus sign, see that? So here are two prices, 279 and 334. 279, 334. Let's see. 279, 334. I'm guessing we're, we're rounding to the nearest cent. Okay, cool. Part C. What is the minimum percentage of gasoline stations that had prices between this and this? This is a little bit tricky here. This is probably the hard, a little bit harder. So we need to figure out K. That's that's basically what we want to do here. We want to figure out K. What is the minimum percentage of gasoline? So we're still trying to find that percentage, but they didn't give us like this four or this two, right? They didn't give us the 2.5 or the four. How many standard deviations away from the center are these two values? That's the question. Well, first we need to figure out how far 339 is from 306. What is that, 33 cents away? And then since it's 11 cents, divide 33 by 11, that's three. So the answer is three, I just figured it out. But let me show you how to do that. So look, 339 minus 306, right? We do that. So 339 minus 306, that gives us 33 cents. So that's the distance from the center to the edge, the center in the middle, and then all the way out to 339. So from 306 to 339. So that's the distance from the center to the edge of the interval. So now how many standard deviations is that? Well, if a standard deviation is 11, you, you just divide 11 cents into 33. So I go over here and I just do 0.33 divided by 0.11 gives me three. So I figure out that K is three. So now I'm gonna do my percentage formula, one over one divided by three squared. That's the formula to find the minimum percent. 88.88 or 88.89. So there you go. Assuming they want two decimal places, that's it. So looks like we finished this Chubby Chef's inequality, and I uh, hope that helps.